everyone, my name is Allie and welcome to my channel. So as you can see by the title, I'm going to be talking about some of my most disappointing reads of 2019. I decided to go with the title of most disappointing mainly because these were all books that I went into with very high hopes and I really thought I was going to like all these books and I ended up not liking any of them. And it's not like I hate any of these books or anything, but they're just not my cup of tea and I just couldn't really vibe very well with them. You could say they didn't pass the vibe check. But as I hate disclaimers, we are gonna go right on in to all of my opinions and all the books that I was disappointed in. So since I don't own any of these books, I do have them written down in my journal. So the first book is Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire, and I gave that book two stars out of five. So this was one of the first books that I read this year, and I read it mainly because A, the audiobook was super short, and B, it's a super, super hyped book from a super, super hyped series, and I was very intrigued about reading it because it sounded like it would be something that I might enjoy. You know, it's kind of like almost a fairy tale, fable sort of retelling series. And it follows these people that have gone to like these fairy tale-esque sort of worlds like Wonderland or whatever, Fairyland or I don't know, anything you could think of. And they come back and they're kind of forever changed and a lot of them do want to go back to these worlds and they feel out of place in the real world. So they all go to the school for wayward children and it's very interesting. I love the premise of this plot, but the book just did not do it for me at all. I felt like the execution of the plot was really weak and I wasn't super impressed by the writing either. I just, I don't know if it was either the writing wasn't really good or if it just wasn't for me, but either way, I just couldn't really enjoy the book. I also felt like a lot of the characters were kind of underdeveloped or were caricatures of just like one personality trait and I just couldn't really get into any of the characters or relate to them in any sort of way and it just felt really kind of like superficial. And when I can't vibe with any of the characters, that's kind of it for me. I'm a very character driven person so I really have to connect with and understand and empathize with the characters and if I don't then I'm probably gonna really dislike the book. So I feel like that's kind of what happened with this one and it's definitely disappointing because these books have such beautiful covers and everyone loves them and I feel like such the odd one out but I just really didn't enjoy my experience reading it and I'm super sad but it's a very fast audiobook so that, that's, that kind of gets like a pretty high mark for me. <laughs> The next book is actually a poetry collection and that is Please Don't Go Before I Get Better by Madison Kuhn and I gave that two stars out of five as well. And basically my issues with this poetry collection was mainly that I felt like the poems didn't make sense. Like I'm definitely not a poetry reviewer I guess, I don't really review poetry, but I have a pretty good sense of when I do like poems and when I don't like poems. And these ones just did not work for me. I didn't feel like there was anything really strong about the way that these poems were written. I didn't feel like there was anything new or fresh said with them. And I was just really underwhelmed overall with all of the poetry. You know, there's I'm pretty picky when it comes to poems and I really know when I don't like one and when I do. This poem collection was kind of one that I just kind of forced myself to get through, mainly because I really wanted to get a lot of books read during the Biblio, the booktuber, I don't remember, what was it called? The booktuber something. The one that Mayana did back in February, that, uh, that reading challenge thing. I don't remember what it's called. I'm leaving all this in because I honestly don't remember what it was called. The booktuber, booktube, the booktube games. I think that's what it's called. The booktube games. I don't remember. Anyway, but I really wanted to get like a lot of books read. So I did read that poetry collection. Did not like it, unfortunately. It has a really beautiful cover though. That's like kind of a theme though. Within this entire video, so many of these books have beautiful covers and they just didn't work for me. The next one I feel is going to be very contentious, and it always is whenever I bring it up, and that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, and I gave that book two stars out of five as well. So when I finished this book initially, I did give it three out of five stars, and I did do a review on it on my channel, so I will leave that link down below, but I decided to lower my rating mainly because for me now with my rating system, I do feel like three stars is kind of a positive review still. So I felt like 
with the amount of negative feelings I have towards this book, I should probably lower my score. And I did that with a lot of books, um, mainly because I did kind of change up my rating scale. And it's definitely um, moved a little bit that way. So like before three stars was kind of a two star and four was kind of a three and five was kind of like a four and a five mixed together if that makes any sense it probably doesn't but now i feel like a three star is very positive rather than negative so i decided to lower my rating and i do have a video like i said talking all about my feelings so i don't really want to go too far into it but my biggest issues were that the book was way too long it was at least 100 pages too long if not more a lot of the end half of the book was filler and just things that were super unnecessary. Um, it was, it ended up being really, really predictable towards like, I feel like after you get to like page 100, you could just guess everything that ends up happening and you would probably be like 100% correct. And I just didn't really enjoy that. And then my other issue was that it was written in third person and third person limited at that, which was very jarring and not, it didn't really add for a very exciting or pleasurable reading experience. I mainly enjoy first person when it comes to contemporary, especially when it comes to romance, and I just cannot get into a third person limited perspective when there's only one character's perspective being shown. And I felt like if Casey was going to use third person, then it should have been like multiple perspectives. I would have loved to see more of Henry because I really liked him as a character. I think he was probably my favorite character out of the entire cast and I felt like there was definitely some room there to give other people some perspectives but we just kind of got Alex's perspective and I wasn't super into him so it's a little disappointing in that aspect as well. The next book is another one I've talked a lot about on my channel and that is Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler and I gave that two stars out of five. So Sweet Bitter was one of the books that I read when I did that video about reading YouTubers favorite books so like non booktuber YouTubers and I really enjoyed that concept and I definitely want to do more of those kind of videos but that specific like round of books that I had were just awful. I hated them both and Sweet Bitter was one of them and I could not stand that book. It was so pretentious and so awful like and I think one of the things I did like though was that all the characters were unlikable in very realistic ways but I just still hated the plot and I hated the writing style. I just, I couldn't get into it. I just, it was very difficult. I think another thing I did like about it was that it did follow quite a younger person in their 20s rather than like an older person in their 20s. So it could kind of be a bit of new adult. But overall, I was really, really underwhelmed with this book. And then I think when I watched the show, that really cemented it because I did try to watch the first episode of Sweet Better and it was terrible. So um, it really didn't make for a good audiobook and it didn't make for a good show either. So it just ended up being kind of like a two thumbs down in my book. If you like stuff like Gossip Girl, you might enjoy it, but it's very dry in comparison to Gossip Girl. So I, it's, not, it's not one I recommend. <laughs> the next one was also part of that uh, video that I did and that is Turtles All The Way Down by John Green. And I gave that two stars out of five. This was one that I went into a little hesitant, mainly because the only John Green book I've ever actually enjoyed was The Fault in Our Stars, and I have attempted to read all of his books, and I could not get past like the first chapter of any of his books. They're just not for me. I just don't think that John Green and I agree, and we're definitely very different people. And I like him as a person. I think he's a really great person. I used to love watching his YouTube videos with his brother, but I can't read his books. His books just do not work for me. They never have. The only one that did was The Fault in Our Stars. And I think that that might've just been because it was popular. And I don't know, I just could not get into Turtles All The Way Down. I did finish it and I listened to it on audiobook and I just was not impressed. I was very underwhelmed and it just none of it really felt like it fit together it felt like a first draft of a novel of like someone who can write really well so they write a really good first draft 
but it never went through editing so it's like kind of rough around the edges and the narrative doesn't really make sense and the plot points weren't hit every single time so it's just a little awkward for me to read and I did really like the main character but also the main character kind of gave me anxiety and it really is like triggering some like negative emotions in me so it was very hard to read the book especially listening to it I felt like listening to it was even tougher because I would kind of hear her in my brain being like saying all these things and I have really bad anxiety so that wasn't a super fun <laughs> experience for me so possibly I mean if you have really bad anxiety as well then you might not want to listen to this book it might be easier for you to read it um, physically but listening to this book was like asking for a panic attack honestly and I hated it I hated every second of it I wanted it to be over so bad and I was so excited when it was over <laughs> The next book was Hello Girls by Brittany Cavallero and Emily Henry and I gave that book two stars out of five as well. So I think this might have been one of my most anticipated books of the year, mainly because Brittany Cavallero was a co-writer for it and I love Brittany Cavallero. I love her Charlotte Holmes series. It's literally one of my favorites. I've reread them and they're just absolutely perfection. However, this book really really missed the mark for me. I felt like the characterization wasn't there. The plot was really interesting and they did get into some interesting antics, however I just didn't really like the characters, I didn't like the ending, the ending was just awful. It was just so bad, like I would have loved to have kind of like an epilogue possibly, and I'm not typically an epilogue kind of person, but for this book I really felt like it was necessary. I just didn't really enjoy a lot of the narrative for some reason. I felt like the structure was a little odd. I felt like the action sequences weren't really written very well, strangely enough. And I don't know if that was Emily Henry's fault or if that was Brittany Cavallero's fault, but I just don't think that I like books written by two authors. I feel like it never works out for me. I've read multiple books, or I've, at least I've tried to read multiple books with co-authors and it is never pretty. So yeah, I just felt like it was a lot of stuff that just disappointed me and I was really, really expecting to like this book. <laughs> and the last book is one I was definitely super heartbroken over and that is We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia and I gave this book a two stars out of five. So this was a book I was super looking forward to and I genuinely expected it to be a favorite of the year because it is a sapphic book, it is kind of like a fantasy, a little bit dystopian, and it just seemed to have so many elements that I really enjoy. And I was also super interested in like the idea of a dystopian world where these girls get sent off to this boarding school and they get taught how to be wives and stuff like that. But that really wasn't a big part of the plot. Like it's marketed like that. It's definitely marketed like that. And I was definitely misled. It's kind of like the same thing that happened with Red, White, and Royal Blue, where that was marketed as a hate to love, and it was not a hate to love book. And this book also suffered from that as well, now that I'm remembering it. This book also suffers from the, it's marketed as hate to love, but it is not hate to love. For me, as someone who loves hate to love uh, tropes and relationships, I was super disappointed. I don't feel like a book should be marketed as hate to love if all of that gets resolved before the 100 page mark. If it's resolved like that in a couple pages and we're all fine and we're all over it, then that's not hate to love. That's just like they had a little bit of a misunderstanding and now it's all fixed and everything's fine and dandy. And that's not hate to love to me. Like hate to love is slow burn. It is from day one until maybe even the end of the book, especially if it's in a series, you wanna draw out that hate to love, honey. You don't want to like get it resolved within the first hundred pages. And I felt like both Red, White, and Royal Blue and We Set the Dark on Fire both suffered from that enormously. I feel like this book could have been even a 3.5 stars if it had just done the hate to love correctly. For me, I felt like the plot was underdeveloped, the characters were underdeveloped, the relationship was underdeveloped, and I did not believe a single second of that book at all. I was so heartbroken and angry <laughs> that I had kind of been sold a book that was not what I expected it to be and not what it was marketed as which was, it was marketed as a book about a boarding school for girls 
who get trained to be wives and it's hate to love. And the only thing that it really delivered on was the sapphic representation, which I wasn't super, um, I wasn't really a fan of that actually. I felt like the sapphic representation while it was there and while it was very apparent and it was like on page, like very in your face. And I liked that part about it. I felt like the underdeveloped relationship just kind of took a couple like stars from that. You know what I mean? Like it just really detracted from it, unfortunately. And I just could not like it. I feel like I could rant about this book for a really long time. And I don't want to because it does have Latinx representation. It does have sapphic representation. And I feel like it's a little unfair to like really rail against this book. But I feel like it's because I was so disappointed in it. And you know, I was really rooting for this book to be good and it just was not. And, you know, I felt like it could have gone through a couple more rounds of editing, a couple more rounds of maybe even like some beta readers and it just wasn't ready. All right, so that was my entire video. Those were all of the books that I was disappointed in in 2019. And I hope you enjoyed this video, even if I did kind of say some negative things about your favorite, I'm super, super sorry but we're not all gonna like the same books and that's just life and I love watching these videos because even if someone doesn't like my favorite book I still like to hear what they have to say about it and I think it's super interesting to kind of share everybody's opinions and you know kind of learn from other people and be accepting of everyone's opinions and I, I just think that like it creates a really healthy environment so I love these kind of videos and I hope you do too. And also stay tuned for my favorites video of the year. That will be a much more positive video. And I really love watching those and making those as well. So definitely keep your eye out for that. Also in the comments down below, let me know some of your least favorite or most disappointing books of 2019. Even if they're one of my favorite books, just let me know. I definitely wanna hear from you guys. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitter and Goodreads and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!